for Krima Media's Politi Yamtabi Madiba, former newspaper editor and banking executive Songezo Zibi, who is now the leader of newly formed political party Rise Mzanzi, joins me to talk policies, politics, and the 2024 elections. Hi, Songezo. Hi, Tan. And um, can you briefly detail why you decided to start a political party and what the journey to establishing Rise Mzanzi has entailed? So I think South Africa's biggest problem is the politics. And I think the, the biggest political symbol we have in South Africa is the ANC, because it's the Coca-Cola of South African politics. But we've got a far deeper problem than the ANC. We have a political culture that is really unhelpful. It turns people off. And it values sloganeering over for real solutions, uh, basically. And about 28 million people don't vote as a result of that either for the ANC or any other political party. And being voters ourselves, we started thinking about how can we change this situation? And you can't change it without going into politics. You can't change it by replicating the same problem that you, you don't like. In other words, joining either the ANC or the DA or any of these political parties that are putting so many people off. Instead, we chose to try and find out why is it that so many people, despite being politically engaged, don't vote? What upsets them? What would make them come back and participate in politics and vote again? And the outcome of that process was Rise Mzanzi, um, because we thought we can do politics differently. We can think differently about all problems and, and solutions there too. And we can have a politics that is built from the ground up and mobilizes people to, to drive the change they want to see. Mm -hmm. And Rise Mzanzi has now been registered with the IEC and is ready to contest the elections in all nine provinces. So can you tell us about some of the party's most significant policies through which you aim to improve um, the country's situations? So the first thing I, I'd, like us to, I'd like to share with you is that policy is important, but governance is even more important. South Africa has a governance problem. You can have the best solutions in the world if the institutions that are supposed to implement those solutions are dysfunctional and don't work, then you, you are not going to have a, uh, you're not going to have the kind of outcome that you're looking for. And I'll make just two examples. The first is that we, we talk about jobs and the economy and so on. Every business is in a municipality. Every single one of them is in a municipality over 80 percent of municipalities are dysfunctional. They are financially weak, the administration is poor, the municipal infrastructure is falling apart and so on. Unless you fix that, there is no solution that Ibrahim Patel or anyone comes up with that makes a difference. That's one example. The second example is that some of the highest input costs for companies and households are administra administered prices. <laughs> it's electricity, it's water, and, and so on, which are government services. And they are so expensive now because of poor administration, because of corruption, and so on. So what I'm trying to say to you is one of our most important propositions is significant government reform. If you don't reform the government and the state as a whole, including parliament, no other policy makes sense, unfortunately. And, and that's, where, that's where we're starting. Obviously, we, we've got positions on the economy, we've got positions on, uh, in, in other areas as well, which we can talk about. But I think for a succinct answer, I wanted to emphasize the importance of governance because it affects every other policy area. And later this week, Rise Mzanzi will be holding its first People's Convention, a three-day event to discuss the socio-economic challenges facing the country and how to address the solutions to them. So this is the innovative event. So can you tell our viewers what this will entail and what you hope will come out of this and how can people get involved? The, the convention is something I really wish we could have accommodated more than the 800 delegates that we're going to have and the circa 1,000 people that are going to be in the vicinity doing arts and, and civic education workshops and, and other things for the following reason. And there are two very important uh, reasons. The, the first is, is, is the themes of discussion. There are six. It's the family, it's community, governance, which I spoke about just now, 
it's the economy, it's nation building, and it is climate change. There are six themes. The reason we've chosen these themes is to allow the majority of the delegates are lay people, <laughs> they're ordinary people. You don't want them to, to discuss whether Transnet should be part privatized or not, or ESCOM. Uh, that's not the point. What you want people to do in that setting is to set a very clear tone for the kind of governance and the kind of economy that that they want to see. And then you can go and work with technocrats to develop the solution. So that's the first thing. The second thing, uh, which is two part, is that we're going to use a world cafe style. So political parties usually allocate delegates to commissions. So you stay with the one topic and you don't discuss any other. And you only ever meet it in plenary and that conversation is a mess and it takes hours and it ends at 11. Everyone is going to get to discuss every topic. And it's not just our people, it's representatives of community and civic and other organizations. It is some private individuals and experts and so on. Everybody has a voice because we're building South Africa together. And finally, we're also going to have an arts and sports element because one of the things we've learned is that people want to express themselves through drama, through poetry, through music, through other forms of performance. So there's going to be that in the, in the vicinity as well. Mm -hmm. And Rais Mzanzi has been invited to join the multi-party charter of South Africa with the DA and other political parties. So is your party considering joining this grouping? No, no not at this stage, no. Uh, the reason, I mean, the reasons are really simple. <laughs> it's not complicated. Uh, together, those parties come to around, you know, at their best, they'll come to around 35%. Somebody needs to find the 16%. That's going to take the whole arrangement to 15% percent, to 50% percent plus one. You can't do that by bringing together the same political parties that 28 million people are not voting for. You're not making that a new proposition. The exam question is a different one. Is what would attract the people who don't want to vote for anybody? <laughs> if you can't answer that question, then you can meet all you like as a multi-party charter and so on, you're still not going to get the outcome that you're looking for. And so the most important coalition that we're getting to, as, as I said just now, is a coalition with civic organizations, with national uh, organizations that are in the, in the civic space, in the political space as well, localized political parties and so on, because when you bring those on board, it becomes possible to have a coalition government next year, not now. And so, Mizo, how much support nationally do you think Rais Mzansi can gain in next year's elections? And what percentage of votes are you aiming for? And in which provinces do you expect to perform best? So firstly, we, we're going to contest in all nine provinces, uh, first. Second, uh, which is our secret source, so I'm going to, going to be very careful what I say here. <laughs> we have an organizing model that targets a certain number of voters, not a percentage. Because when you target a certain number, you know how many organizers you need, you know how many volunteers you need, you know how many supporters you need, and what each of those three layers of people do. And therefore you have a different conversation with voters about voting on a continuous basis, not just at election time. You don't do a spray and pray and just put up posters and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I think if you look at our social media pages, you might see we've got lots and lots and lots of young people, they number in the thousands now and older people as well, walking the streets, talking to people in small groups of 5, 10, 20, 100, 300, 500. We try and keep our conversations, a meeting it's not, not bigger than 500 so that mm -hmm. everybody gets a voice, but we actually have a conversation with people about why they must vote for Rise Mzanza. We don't recruit members. And, and on the basis of that conversation and ongoing presence in their lives between now and the election, they make a decision that we must sign them up that they are going to vote for Rise Mzanzi. And we must continue communicating with them and involving them in our activities because on the basis of what you've said, uh, they're going to, to vote for us. We will be one of the top five political parties in South Africa. That's what I can tell you. That's what our modeling is telling us at this stage. Mm -hmm. And if elected president of the country in the next year's elections, well, what would be your first priorities? Depending on the strength of the mandate, I think there's, there's a couple of things. The first one is really to fix the government. <laughs> the, the government machinery has been destroyed. And I think the task in the first, in the first 
six months uh, basically is to firstly you need to have a smaller and more efficient cabinet one of the things that we've discussed is is reducing the number making departments work in a certain way mm -hmm. the department of foreign affairs and the department of trade and industry don't need to be uh, different ministries they can be one why do you have a department of foreign affairs it, it's security and trade right <laughs> and advancing human rights in australia for instance that is one ministry and it works really well so there are things like that that you need to do but most importantly get the right people into the right jobs firstly and secondly put the most vulnerable municipalities that are a bottleneck to everything under administration you got to do that otherwise companies are going to continue to shut down and leave and retrench people and move to uh, to other areas so the administration in the, in the first uh, six months to a year is important. Mm -hmm. And as you just said, that there are a lot of people that are unregistered to vote. So how are you going to convince people to register to vote next year? Do you have a Th plan? That's the other part about our organizing model. There is nobody who's on our list of, of people who's going to vote for us, who's, who's not registered. The thing about just wanting members you get lots of people that are actually not registered, mm -hmm. right? And because they've signed up as your member, you think they're going to vote for you. Come election time, mm -hmm. hey, they're not there. They come to the stadium, they fill up the stadium, they sing, come election, they're not there. Mm -hmm. And so voter education and civic engagement are core to our strategy because simultaneously you make sure every voter you meet, when we put them down, we ask, are you registered or not? If you're not mm -hmm. registered, there are people who get you registered so that you register to vote. That's more important than saying, okay. you know, get a T-shirt and be a member, and then you don't show up at the, at the election. That was Sonia Zozibi speaking to Krima Media's policy about policies, politics, and the 2024 elections.